in the philosophical religious uh, uh, beliefs and systems before either Lao Tzu or Confucius, people believed that the primal Chinese person, Tan Ku, Tan Ku, the first person. Do you remember among the Kikuyu of Kenya, we said that they said that the first uh, Kikuyu couple, Mumbi and Bumbi, came from a fig tree. Here within China, Pan Ku is the first person. And um, he is a uh, mythical figure. He is a divine figure. And when Pan Ku dies, why his, uh, his body becomes the earth and the soil of, of, of China, and his breath becomes the storms and the winds that blow, and, uh, his, uh, and the gnats that start to eat his body are the people. And so this divine figure, when he dies, why uh, he becomes the essence of China. Um, so just as is true of the Tiamat myth that we talked about from, from uh, Mesopotamia, where Tiamat and Marduk are the primal divine figures who, in a colossal battle, bring about the formation of the earth. Uh, so here, it is uh, this divine Panku that brings about the formation of the earth. Well, we talked about Amaterasu and, and his cons her consort in uh, Japan bringing about the divine islands of Japan. Very similar sort of myth here within China. We call these nature cults, nature myths, in which creation and uh, the existence of society and so forth is thought of as having come from, uh, from a divinity. In this case, a dying god called Panku. So that's very much part of the traditional culture. And you know, even dead gods are dangerous. You offer sacrifices to them. And so if you visited China, and even today in some places, you'll find on the hills and so forth, little shrines where people will offer sacrifices and so forth to the divinities of nature and the divinities of the sky and so forth. Uh, and uh, recognizing that Panku was a divine figure who died and uh, uh, whose fertility and so forth we need. And so uh, that kind of, uh, of, of, uh, of religious relationship takes place between the living people and the society and the earth in which they live. Chin refers to the Middle Kingdom. When I visited China some years ago, uh, as we were driving along, our, our, our tour guide said, that is Chin, and he showed us a mountain nearby that we were driving past. He said, Chin is the origin of the Chinese people. This is where they first settled. It is, that mountain is like the parent of the Chinese people the Middle Kingdom. Um, that notion that China is the middle of the earth, the Middle Kingdom, I think runs very deep in Chinese philosophy and thinking. Uh, that the whole cosmos uh, revolves around this kingdom, who is the Middle Kingdom. Um, it's where heaven and earth meet on that mountain. And the Chinese people come from that mountain. Um, and from there, they spread all across the land, from the Middle Kingdom. Um, other kingdoms are peripheral to the Middle Kingdom. If you want to be at the center of the earth, go to the Middle Kingdom, which is China. So that's a theme that runs very deep, also within Chinese, within Chinese thinking. Um, then you have the whole notion of yin-yang. These two fish that intertwine with each other, yin yang, the male female principle, these modes of energy, where the dark is the female principle and the light is the male principle. And all of creation, all of, all of nature, all of all phenomenon is seen as a, as a intermingling back and forth of these basic principles. It's daytime now, the male principle is prevailing. Soon it will be nighttime, right here where we are. That means the female principle will be prevailing. And then tomorrow morning at about 
what, uh, six o'clock or so, we'll begin to see the male principle reappearing. Um, you travel through the mountains. On one side, you will find darkness and shade. And on the other side of the road you're traveling on, you will see sunshine, yin yang, the interaction between the two. Uh, the rooster is very important in Chinese uh, lore. About four o'clock in the morning, the rooster, the, the rooster crows. What is he doing? What's he crowing about? He is crowing to announce that, that the yin yang principle are back in play again, that soon the, the, the male principle will, re will reappear and uh, there will be brightness and sunshine, you know. And then at night, of course, the rooster goes to sleep. But then in the morning, he comes again and he announces the return of the yin, of, of, of yin yang. Uh, the male-female principles working with each other. That runs very, very deep in Chinese culture. I remember I visited China after the Tiananmen Square catastrophe, which was a horrendously difficult time for China. And uh, I met with different government officials and university professors and officials. I was with, with another, others as well. We were traveling representing our church. and. Uh, I asked them, how do you feel about what has happened with Tiananmen Square? And yin yang, yin yang, you know? Uh, the good comes, but then the bad comes. And now we're in a good time, and then we were in a bad time. And that's the way life is, that there's the good and there's the bad. If there is bad, just wait, soon the good will prevail. If there's good, just wait, soon the bad will prevail. That life is that kind of a rhythm, back and forth, yin yang. What about the... Uh, the Great Leap Forward, when Mao Zedong was, uh, was uh, holding sway in China, and the horrendous uh, suffering that that brought, yin yang, you know, good and then evil, evil and then good. That's the way it is. And so you don't fight it. You cooperate with it. You work with it. The yin yang principle, very deep running in, in, Chinese, in Chinese culture. And closely related to that is the principle of wu wei. The principle of Wu Wei would be um, not to be meddlesome. Don't be meddlesome. Um, be relaxed. Let things work out as they will. Um, there is evil and there is good. Just pause and wait. Soon the good will return. Again, the yin yang principle also applied to Wu Wei. Approach life in a lazy, fair way. If you try to fix things, you'll probably make them worse. <laughs> Just relax. It'll finally work out. Be at peace. <laughs> Don't get so uptight. Don't be meddlesome. Relax. Let things take their time. That relaxed spirit, Wu Wei. Very important in traditional Chinese thinking. Um, I think of the Old Testament prophets, you know, who would uh, proclaim against the evils of their society with great vigor and uh, tears and uh, warnings and so forth. The Wu Wei principle would say, don't be so worked up. Back off. Wait. Sooner or later it will work out. Wu Wei. Be gentle. Just wait. Don't be meddlesome. Don't get involved in areas which are not your business. Wu Wei. And then is the principle of Tao. I don't know. It may be that the principle of Tao is uh, quite similar to the Kami idea within uh, Japanese religion. Um, but Tao has, is similar to that, but it has very much within it the notion of, of the way that nature has a way. So just flow with the way. If you have a rock in a stream and you wish that rock were out of the stream, just wait. Wait 200 years and the rock will be no more. The water will slowly erode the rock. Eventually it will be gone. 
if there's a problem in your life, you know, just watch, just flow with nature, flow with the stream. All water goes downhill and empties into the ocean eventually. Just follow the stream. Eventually you'll come to the ocean. Tao. Don't force things. Be relaxed. Tao. There is this philosopher called Lao Tzu who wrote a lot about the Tao. He is credited with this philosophy. A lot of very interesting comments here. Therefore, lose Tao and Te follows. Lose Te and benevolence follows. Lose benevolence and righteousness follows. Lose righteousness and propriety follows. Propriety dilutes loyalty and sincerity. Confusion begins. Foreknowledge glorifies the Tao. Stupidity sets in. And so the ideal person dwells in substance, not dilution, in reality, not glory, accepts one, rejects the other. Of the old, these attained the one. Heaven attaining the one became clear. Earth attaining the one became stable. Spirits attaining the one became sacred. Valleys attaining the one became bountiful. Myriad beings attaining the one became futile. Lords and kings pertaining the one purified the world, and so on and so on. Just a lot of very wise comments about what it means to follow the Tao and not to, uh, not to force things. <clears throat> Tao engenders one, one engenders two, two engenders three, three engenders the 10,000 things. The 10,000 things carry shade, and embrace the sunlight, shade and sunlight, yin and yang, breath and blending into harmony. Humans hate to be alone, poor and hungry, yet kings and princes use these words as titles. We gain by losing, lose by gaining. What others teach, I also teach. A violent man does not die a natural death. This is the basis of my teaching. And on and on. Just a lot of uh, interesting um, philosophical con concepts which uh, are advice on how to relate to the world in which we live. But the underlying principle is just be relaxed. Don't force things. Flow with the stream. Don't buck the tide. Uh, just be patient and wait. And in time, things will go away. Act and you ruin it. Let me back up again. Create before it exists. Lead before it goes astray. A tree too big to embrace is born from a slender shoot. A nine-story tower rises from a pile of earth. A thousand-mile journey begins with a single step. That's nice. A thousand-mile journey begins with a single step. Act and you ruin it. Grasp and you lose it. Therefore, the sage does not act. Wu Wei, and so does not ruin. Ku Wu Pai does not grasp, and so does not lose. People commonly ruin their work when they are near success. Proceed at the end as at the beginning, and your work won't be ruined. Therefore, the sage desires no desires, prizes no prizes, studies no studies, and returns to what others pass by. Many, many very interesting aphorisms. It's interesting that some Bible translations uh, when they come to John chapter 1, which says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was life, or in the beginning was the Word, all things were made through the Word, nothing was made that was not made through the Word, John 1, the, that whole passage there, that in Bible translations, oftentimes they use the term Tao, taken from uh, when they're translating for Chinese philosophy. Here it talks about the Tao being the way, uh, the way of all creation, the way of history. Uh, the way of God. And so they use that, that, uh, that term oftentimes to, uh, to uh, uh, in Bible translations, the Tao. In the beginning was the Tao, and the Tao was with God, and the Tao was God. All things were made through him, through the Tao. Nothing was made that was not made except through the Tao, God's self-expression, the Tao, the way. There's a lot of debate about that, but I think that is the general consensus of Bible translators these days, that they will use Tao to refer to the word when they're translating for a Chinese, for a Chinese audience. <clears throat> 
We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. Now, very related to the whole Tao concept is, uh, is Tao going uh, awry. And this is Gigong. <clears throat> Gigong. Gigong seems to me to derive from this Tao concept, but turns it away from this notion of being at peace with creation, with nature, and working with it. It turns it in a different direction and becomes occultic. It becomes beholden to mana. You remember we talked about mana and how occultic powers draw their powers from this mana concept, this impersonal life force, which is a little bit like electricity that can be bent and manipulated. That is what Gong is in the Chinese experience. It is using magical power uh, to uh, manipulate um, phenomenon and has become a rage across China. It's interesting, China is so secular, uh, so secularist in so many, many ways, that something like Gigong would become so potent a force in Chinese society, and it terrifies the government. Why do you think the Chinese government would be so concerned about Gigong? In fact, it is declared illegal against the law. But it is not to say that Gigong is not practiced. And what has happened in China is since Gigong is illegal on the mainland, hundreds of thousands of practitioners of Gigong go across the border into uh, Hong Kong. And there they have their huge, hundreds of thousands strong Gigong rallies. Uh, they're one nation. <laughs> but on this one here, Hong Kong is, uh, is uh, stretching its wings a bit and giving permission for these huge, huge rallies to take place in Hong Kong that the Chinese government on the mainland would not permit to happen. Why do you think they would have so much concern about that, about Gigong, that they would declare it illegal? Well, this is the reason. They say, if we're going to progress and move forward, we need to work hard. There's no shortcuts to working hard to building the nation, to building our skyscrapers and roads and so forth and developing our schools. That takes hard work. It takes energetic planning. And what Gigong does is to take people's energies away from hard work to this mystical, magical sort of stuff where the energies go into manipulating these powers in various ways in order to triumph over these powers. And we're not happy about that. Uh, we want people to work hard not to get caught up in this occultic kind of thing. That, that is not a good foundation upon which to build the nation. And so there's huge objection officially in the Chinese government from Gigong. And I, in my judgment, this Gigong movement uh, probably finds its roots way, way back there, you know, hundreds of years ago within the this uh, Tao kind of philosophy, um, the power of nature, the way water flows, cooperate with it. Don't manipulate, or, you know, don't manipulate it, just flow with it. And uh, I think that eventually over the uh, centuries in recent times, this Tao kind of concept, this concept of the way of nature became distorted. I don't mean that Lao Tse too was a, was a practitioner of, of, uh, of the cult, I don't believe that. But it became distorted in the form of this Gigong phenomenon, which is so very, very prevalent within China today. <laughs>